uh, we were placed on a lockdown almost three months ago. Well, uh, most of us have been uh, staying at home. And uh, well, we were allowed to go out only for essential goods. Even until now, uh, senior citizens are in a GCQ situation are told to stay at home except uh, when they have to run an errand regarding essential goods. And what would essential goods be? Well, it would be uh, anything that uh, uh, well, it would be food or uh, medicines. Okay, essential goods would be anything that we need in order to live. So that would be essential. Anything that we need in order to live. And maybe we were okay with that at the beginning. Now, kaya lang, when things have become, when things have been relaxed a little bit, and uh, uh, many, many uh, uh, stores were allowed to open, okay, we realized that, uh, well, um, the concept of essential goods uh, was expanded. Like, essential goods would mean hardwares. Essential goods would mean uh, would mean not only food but also clothing so added to food and medicine would be clothing and would be things you find in the hardware okay and uh, well bookstores okay? books uh, stationaries um, ball pens so on and so forth. And, uh, you know, things have been relaxed. And, well, it is really very sad that uh, well, while, while uh, 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 certain stores have been uh, open, still there is a great limitation when it comes to uh, mass attendance. As you all well know, in a GCQ situation, we are allowed only 10 attendees uh, during the Mass. Only 10. In an ECQ situation, it would have been 5. And now we are in GCQ, well, only 10 are supposed to attend. And uh, you ask, why? Why is there such a restriction regarding the mass? Well, uh, they would say, well, it's because, you know, uh, uh, it might spread the virus. Uh, it might spread the virus, plain and simple, okay? So religious activities might spread the virus. And... Uh, well, um, in a bus, you could uh, accommodate more people than you could accommodate in a church. Okay? So maybe in a bus, you can accommodate 26 people. In a church, only 10. But I have not seen a bus which is as large as a church. I have even the smallest chapel would definitely be larger, would definitely be larger than a bus. Okay? So, that is it. Maybe uh, uh, people, uh, well, well, actually, uh, that, 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 uh, that Manyanita in uh, UP, there were more than 10 people. But maybe it was because it was outside because it was outdoors and people kept physical distancing and they wore masks, nobody said anything about the number of people attending that mananita. Okay? Now, 
to my opinion, it is simply this. That uh, um, to the non-believer, the celebration of the Mass is no different uh, from the worship of Muslims in a mosque. It would be no different from the um, prayer meeting of the evangelicals. It would be no different from the pagsamba of the Iglesia de Cristo. And then comes the argument. You can always pray at home. Okay? You can always pray in the privacy of your homes without needing to go out in order to go to church. But this is where non-believers are actually wrong. Why is that so? Well, because while it's true, we can even pray the rosary at home. We can have prayer meetings via Zoom. We can, we can, uh, the, the Muslims can just, you know, roll out a prayer rug, prostrate on the ground in their house, and they have, they have fulfilled their obligation of prayer. It is true. But you see, there's something which we could not do in the privacy of our house. And what would that be? It would be the reception of Holy Communion. Okay? The host cannot just be, you know, fed into a camera lens and out it goes through the TV screen. It cannot be done that way. Nor can you put host in front of your TV set and then consider it consecrated the moment the priest utters the words of consecration. It simply cannot be done. Well, I have brother priests who, uh, who, who say otherwise. Like you can bless a palm by putting it in front of your computer screen. Or you can bless a rosary or water or what have you by putting it in front of the screen and then the priest utters a blessing and voila! It's holy rosary and holy water and holy ash and holy palm. But you see, you cannot do it all in transubstantiation. Okay? So it simply cannot be done. In order to receive communion, either you ask the priest to go to your house and administer Holy Communion like Viaticum, or you go to church and receive the body of the Lord uh, personally from the hands of the priest himself. But you see, that is the problem with non-believers. They think that the sacred host is non-essential good. We can live without it. We can exist without Holy Communion. But the Gospel of St. John says otherwise. Sayang kasi in the old lectionary, it's a shortened, it's a shortened version of the pericope of John 6 because dito magbamalaki mo sa Novus Ordo. Haba talaga ready today. And today, what was, what is not in the old lectionary is in the new lectionary. And what is that? Jesus says, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink His blood, you have no life in you. The words of our Lord Himself, you have no life in you unless you eat the flesh and drink the blood of the Son of Man. 
you have no life in you is the very verse that tells you that Holy Communion is essential good. Again, what makes something essential good? Something is needed in order to live. That is essential. And what would that be? Food, medicine, and the Eucharist. Nothing could even be more essential than it because our Lord Jesus himself said, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you do not have life in you. In fact, you know, the sardines that come with the ayuda and the mineral water, they can only sustain you for some time. They can only prolong life to a certain extent. But what did the Lord say? It's again not in the dictionary today, in the old dictionary, but in the new one. He says, For the man who eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and him will I raise on the last day. And then you have the beginning of today's gospel in our dictionary. For my flesh is food indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. So, the noodles that you find in your goodie bag, your ayuda, with the sardines and luncheon meat from China, okay? They can only sustain your life to a certain extent. But only the flesh and blood of Christ can give you eternal life. So in the sardines and the luncheon meat are deemed as essential good, goods, the Eucharist is essential or it's more essential it is more essential than the food that daily we take. Because only the Eucharist can give us eternal life. And this is something which the secular world refuses to accept. And therefore, they do not see the necessity of the Mass. Therefore, the Mass is wrapped, devoted to the level of the worship of other religions or the worship of Christian sects. The Mass is devoted to the level of prayer meetings. And that is very sad. Because, you know, if we see that we cannot live without the sardines and the luncheon meat, all the more we should see that we cannot live without holy communion. The Lord Jesus says, in the Holy Gospel, as the living Father has sent me, and I live by the Father. So he that eats me, the same also shall live by me. Yes, you heard it right, dear evangelicals. Yes, you heard it right, dear Iglesia Christo. The Lord really said, eat me. Okay? The Lord Jesus said, eat me. So he that eats me, the same also shall live by me. Yes, he actually said it. Eat him. So let us eat him. It might sound irreverent, but that is what the Lord commands us to do. Take and eat. 
This is my body. Take and eat. I remember my liturgy professor before. You might not agree with him. Because pious, 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 uh, pious uh, practice would say, or oh, just a, uh, just a, uh, what is it? Melt. Sip-sipin mo na lang yung ostia. But don't bite. Iti nga eh, sabi nga eh, eat. So it means masticate. Chew him. Eat him. That's the command. Eat. Take and eat. For this is my body which will be given up for you. So let us do pray that, uh, you know, we may find ways to distribute Holy Communion and make Holy Communion even more accessible. Fake news, like uh, we're back, going back to ECQ, start helping out. Okay? But you know, if we really want to help people, we should give them access to worthy communion. I mean, uh, worthy communion. So I, I do hope that pastors will think of ways to dispense, to give the body of Christ in Holy Communion in a worthy way. Of course, it's not right naman to, uh, to put the Lord in a chiclet thing and then distribute the chiclet, like chiclet. You don't. It's the body of the Lord. It's the body of the Lord. So let us always ask the Lord, Lord, give us our daily bread. And that daily bread does not mean sardines and luncheon meat. That daily bread is the food of angels that came down from heaven and that brings about eternal life. O Mary, conceived without sin, the Father, the Son, who is Spirit.